Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Jacqueline Dorsey of Lean Frontiers and I'll serve as your host today. I'm excited to bring to you today a short webinar on lean leadership facilitated by one of North America's most experienced facilitators, Sam McPherson. So for now, let me turn things over to Sam. Uh, thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, today we're going to cover a few things, I think, of interest in the time that we have. Uh, I just want to see if we can uh, get people more interested in taking a look at how we currently uh, develop lean leaders and, and how we might be able to do a better job at uh, developing lean leaders than, than what we're doing right now. Uh, so we're going to talk about some of the prerequisites of, of a successful lean transformation. We're also going to talk about some of what I'd say is the current state of lean leader development. And then we're going to talk about some strategies uh, for developing lean leaders. And, uh, and then, then I'm going to end with some basic fundamentals on lean leadership development that regardless of if you have a, a, a strong developed plan, if you follow these fundamentals, you're going to end up doing a better job developing your lean leadership pipeline, both for your current leaders as well as uh, part of your future, uh, future leaders that will come into your organization. And, and then I'll follow if, if time's allowed uh, uh, for some Q&As, uh, for, for some question and answers from, from the group. So as, as in, in our experience, and I'm talking about the Lean Leadership Academy, uh, and some of the work we've done with uh, some other groups such as the Shingo Institute, we discovered that, the, that there's only a small 15 percent uh, population that has attempted lean that continues to grow and, and advance in lean performance as well as in lean deployment across the organization after two, three, or four years. And one of the things that we found uh, in that top 15 percent is that all of this 15 percent all have the following three things in common. Number one, there was a lot, there was a real strong business case for changing the organization's management system. So, so, so number one, to have a successful lean transformation, number one, you need to have a strong business case for change. And you're going to need to be able to articulate that in the organization because people are familiar. They, they don't like uh, unfamiliar things, and they like the devil they know versus the devil that they don't know. So, so you'll need to be able to make the case that we need to change how we're doing things. Secondly, you need to implement a lean management system, and you need to, to implement the full management methodology and the support systems that go along with lean uh, comprehensively as a system. And, and then thirdly, something that's kind of unique about uh, lean organization is we have a very, very well-developed uh, leadership infrastructure. So to fill that leadership infrastructure, since we're essentially team-based organizations, um, we need very highly qualified and very highly skilled and committed lean leaders. And, and so if you have all three of these prerequisites, the chance of having a very successful lean transformation grows up, goes up uh, dramatically. So today we're going to talk a little bit about that third bullet. We're going to have a conversation about lean leadership. So why should the lean community take a look at our current leadership development methods? Well, number one, if you see by the, the house of TPS there, TPS or, or a lean management system actually needs strong, highly engaged lean leaders that are capable of they, to think clearly under pressure, uh, understand their role in developing others and be able to respond to a, a, a number of problems that might occur throughout their leadership tenure to include advanced problem solving and, and planning. Uh, so, so TPS needs strong leaders, but the other thing you can, you can understand about TPS is that TPS actually, the system itself, actually takes a good leader and makes them a better leader. So it's our job to make sure that we're properly preparing lean leaders for the role of a very dynamic management system, which is TPS. 
So as lean leaders, we must be able to, number one, inspire others. We, may, we need to inspire them to change how we used to do things, inspire them to be part of the transformation. We also have to have strong problem solving and planning skills. We need to be able to do problem solving and planning, and we need to be able to teach others how to do that for themselves as well. We also need to be able to recruit inside and outside of the organization. One of the things that's, that's very clear about a lean organization is we always look for opportunities for people to participate in improvement activities, and that requires good lean leaders to be able to go out and recruit participants to be part of improvement activities. We need the skill in teaching. We need skill in coaching to help uh, individual team members and other leaders to improve their performance as a role uh, as a lean leader, we also have to mentor. We have to be able to mentor our uh, team members and other leaders at least two levels down. So we need to realize our role in developing others. Uh, we need to, need to be able to advise our bosses and, and other leaders as to courses of actions and recommendations. So we need skill in advising. And of course, since we are generally business oriented, we need to achieve results. And we need to achieve results through lean values. Uh, and lastly, we ne as lean leaders, uh, or second to lastly, uh, as lean leaders, we, never need, we need to never stop learning ourselves. So understanding how we learn and continuing to dig into knowledge in, in, of, of our chosen craft is something that we're expected to do. And lastly, we need to challenge ourselves and challenge others to achieve a different level. And this is a cycle, and once we've achieved that challenge, of course, we now must inspire others and plan and so forth. So it is a cycle. And each one of these must-be-able-tos requires a very specific set of developmental and training skills. And today, most lean leaders do not get specific training in helping uh, them to be able to do these requirements of a lean leader. Uh, so we need to do a better job with that because lean leaders must be able to do these things. The other thing we need to be concerned with is that there is a shortage of leaders that, and it's beginning to threat and threaten U.S. industry. Right now, according to a 2012 Deloitte LLC survey called the Talent Edge, there is a 31% gap between the availability of high potential globally deployable and highly engaged leaders versus that need. In fact, I can tell you that it is our experience that every one of our clients have shortages of qualified lean leaders. Plenty of managers, but very few actual leaders. So in this survey, uh, the 2020 Talent Edge that Deloitte did, uh, along with an Accenture study, uh, the executives that were surveyed identified a top five uh, need for them for the upcoming years, and they include, number one, uh, developing their leadership and succession plan, uh, two, uh, keeping their leadership teams intact, number three, predicting the globally deployable leadership needs and shortages, number four, focusing on building their leadership pipeline, and lastly, developing or acquiring high-quality supervisors to be that front line of uh, influence on safety, quality, delivery, cost, productivity, and morale. The other ironic thing, according to uh, Jack Zinger, and, and it was published in Harvard Business Review uh, around 2012 and, and is still true today, is that most of us as managers don't get our first real leadership training until we are around 40 years old. That that just can't be the case. In, in fact, uh, most of us have been in a leadership role or supervising people for nearly 10 years before we get our first real form of, of leadership training. And we've got to reverse that trend. If we've got folks that are leading as early as 25 years old, we should have initial leadership training. And then that leadership training should go on throughout the career with, with pre-promotion training and education as well as post-promotion training and education in core competencies, 
for those roles, situational and context competencies, and role-based competencies for each of those roles. Additionally, McKinsey, uh, in, in, a, in uh, the January uh, 2014 McKinsey Quarterly, uh, there was an article that discussed why leadership development programs fail, and I'm sure we all suffer from this. And some of the reasons why they do fail are, number one, a reliance on in, in the individual participant uh, on individual participant-based programs versus a planned pathway uh, of, of mentored leadership education and role-based challenges. So basically what we're saying is that we put individual participants into CAN training versus having our, our bosses two levels up developing a leadership development plan for us or a plan for every person uh, that that will ensure there's a pathway of leadership development and, and career challenges. Number two, sometimes what's known as leave alone zap method. In other words, uh, we get put into a role uh, to lead and, and we never hear anything from our bosses until something goes wrong and then they come down and zap. You know, now you know how you're doing. Uh, and that is a very common practice in leadership development. Number three, one of the things that we really uh, make the mistake of doing is underestimating the current or fundamental existing leader mindsets and behaviors. Uh, so we're not taking a look at, the, at how the leaders that we have right now, how they develop their mindsets, their behaviors, their values, and whether they're in alignment with a lean value system. And so don't underestimate uh, the fundamental existing of, of what one of my clients used to call existing head trash. Uh, we also overlook the importance of situational context or, or environmental context for leadership. In other words, a lot of CAN programs have no idea what kind of environment that leader needs to be able to lead in, especially in initial assignments. The dynamics of a true Toyota production system requires a very agile leader that can think clearly and respond to problems very quickly and understand their role in developing others. Uh, and, and most CAN programs do not prepare you for those kind of in leadership environments. And leadership development has been separated from real transformation or business efforts. You know, a lot of CAN programs talk about the business need for leadership, but we're not connecting the, an actual lean transformation or an actual lean objective, uh, a business objective, as an opportunity and platform for developing leaders. Uh, we kind of tend to want to go with the, the known quantities, you know, the, the leader that we know can get the job done versus saying who would develop from, from working on this project? Who can, who can we put in the leadership role to help them develop as a leader, also accomplish our, our business and transformation objectives? And lastly, we don't tie measurable results to that leader's uh, development in order to help them with the, uh, and give them feedback for uh, for developing them as leaders. And an, an additional two or three elephants in the room, we still train uh, leaders in a classroom, all hands up, you know, just like uh, we used to in, in, in school. Uh, we kill them by PowerPoint, just like I'm doing right now. <laughs> Uh, we find that also some lean leaders feel like they need to lead and get additional education in order to qualify to go someplace else to take on the roles and responsibilities that they're looking for in, a, as a leader. So instead of finding that and getting that support within the organizations, uh, a lot of folks, a lot of leaders will, will leave, go to school, get an MBA, and then go find a job someplace else that that MBA will open the doors for them so that they can get that leadership challenge that they were looking for. Uh, a little high reliance on, on Lean Six Sigma belt programs. Uh, most of these are, some are classroom based. Uh, a lot of them you can get online. Uh, again, good education, but they don't necessarily afford a key activity in leader development, actual leading. And all too often, lean leaders are left alone by themselves to kind of figure it out on themselves. So 
Bottom line, industry executives agree that the future high potential globally deployable leaders are critical to their organization's growth and survival as well as to U.S. competitiveness. However, most of these executives admit they do not themselves know how to develop leaders very well. So we're going to take a look at some of the things that we need to do to do a better job at that. Bottom line is we're, we're, we're very lucky that we have lean leaders that somehow, some way, find a way to lead. They, if they have the will and the need to lead, they will find opportunities to lead. So how can we do a better job at developing our future lean leaders? Well, although I could actually spend days on this subject, we only have a few more minutes, so I'm going to give you a few ideas for you to try out. Some of these, these ideas you can try out tomorrow. And don't forget, according to Vince Lombardi, contrary to popular, uh, the popular opinion of many, many people, leaders are not born, leaders are made, and they are made by effort and hard work, and that is very true. So remember, when you decide to develop both yourself or others as leaders, there will be a lot of hard work involved. Okay, so some basic fundamentals of the lean leadership development success that you need to make sure that you include. Number one, lean leadership development must actually involve leading others. Leadership, especially lean leadership, is the art and the science of influencing others to accomplish something. And so the art is, is something that is nuanced and can be coached. But luckily, there is a science side to, to, to leadership. Therefore, science, because there is a science side, there are processes we can follow to improve our leadership ability. But if you're going to do leadership development, if you're going to develop other leaders or develop yourself, you must find a way to include influencing others. Number two, senior operational leaders must develop lean leaders. We've lost, the, we've lost the skill of lean leaders coming up and matriculating up through the organization. We have to have more senior operational leaders actually developing at least two levels down through the organization. That next generation of leaders, instead of always looking outside the organization to, to hire hired guns as, as leaders for the future of the organization. So senior leaders need to retake ownership of their role in developing lean leaders. Number three, uh, lean leader development must be connected to lean transformation activities and real business growth as a platform. In other words, never turn down an opportunity to use lean transformation or a business requirement as a true opportunity to develop leaders. Uh, lean leadership development must have both educational, experiential, and challenging uh, contexts. And lean leadership must have context with regard to uh, the situation and the environment in which you expect that leader to, to, to operate. So if you're going to be in a production environment, you have to prepare leaders for an operational environment and the demands that go along with that. If you're going to have them lead uh, in a customer service environment, you need to prepare them in context of how to deal and build rapport with, with customers and suppliers and still influence and lead as a lean leader should. Lean leadership development must have clear prerequisites for that leader qualification prerequisites, know what you're looking for in a lean leader. Uh, at, at, at every leadership level, there should be core competencies required of all lean leaders at every level. For example, problem solving is a skill, regardless of, of where you're at in the organization, that every lean leader must be able to have. You just need to broaden the context of, of that application as they gain in responsibility. Each leadership role must have its own role-based competency, so we have to flesh out the leader standard work for a team leader, for a supervisor, a group leader, area manager, plant manager, executive vice president of operations. Um, then we have to also create opportunities to, to have those leaders understand the big picture as well as the process. So, so we'll have to have uh, system integration competencies 
for those lean leaders as well. How does how does my job as a leader fit into the overall picture of a complete uh, operating system such as TPS? And lastly, uh, every day is a good day to lead. So so situational contents competencies uh, are important as well. So a little role play uh, in leadership development. You know, sometimes leaders don't always have the best days and we need to prepare leaders for those days and, and, and give them an opportunity to respond to those problems kind of early. So create some scenarios where the leaders have to uh, go through their decision tree uh, and, uh, and, and figure things out in a, in, 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 in a stressful environment from time to time because leaders have to be able to do that. And then lastly, uh, leadership development must have career long uh, development and education um, pathways uh, instead of hey I went through lean you know green belt or black belt training back when I was young once and done uh, so lean leader development is is a a career long endeavor not just a once and done you know sit in a PowerPoint presentation someplace uh, type activity so as senior lean leaders we need to make sure that we cover these basic fundamentals of lean leadership. Uh, in, in order to have greater success. When you do design your lean leadership development, uh, make sure you design your lean transformation for lean leadership development. So senior leaders need to make sure that they look for every opportunity within a transformation in order to develop junior leaders. So don't always put the person you expect to get things done in that senior leadership role. You know, take a young gun and put them in that place and let them let them develop as they as you implement your lean transformation activities. Also, make sure you 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 set out a plan for every person, uh, a PFEP uh, in your leadership development. So make sure for every leader you have, you have a clear uh, near term and long term plan for developing that leader. Uh, make sure that you have your young lean leaders. Uh, connect to the business objective. Always make them, no matter how small the, the the task, make sure that lean leaders build a solid business case for whatever they're doing. Uh, so we always include uh, how do you how would you make this business case to the shop floor in order to get them involved. Uh, and and our small, I always like to say, always connect your lean transformation to a five million dollar problem or one million dollar problem because if the price tag's big enough it'll get senior leader support and, it, and it'll, it'll be understandable by all of your leaders in the organization as to what's the big so what by, behind why we're doing a lean transformation versus doing things the old way. And make sure you tie uh, lean leader development down to the leader level up to your Hoshin plan or your, your uh, business strategy plan. Make sure you develop role and uh, core competencies at least two levels up. We always like to say develop those lean leader roles and make sure you're training every lean leader for a role and for responsibilities two levels above the, the role that they're going to go to as, as a lean leader. At some point in their career, they're going to either advance to those levels and be prepared for it, or you're going to ask them to go out and work with sister, sister plants or sister organizations or suppliers or even customers. And when they go there, they'll be the only person that knows lean and lean transformation activities. So you need to prepare them for that role. Make, if you do have more than one leader to develop, Connect them together in buddy teams. Uh, we like to set, we like to organize our lean leadership training into buddy teams, and then make those buddies uh, responsible for each other's success. So, in a way, you're kind of using leadership at the at at the 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 lowest level. One leader being responsible for one other person's development, and that's leadership. Uh, TWI Job Relations says leaders get done, get results through people. And so even in leadership development, we want to make sure that a leader gets results through others uh, and build that in. Build in academic challenges as well as performance challenges. And, and make sure you give feedback to that leader as to well they're doing, why, how well they're doing very regularly. And make, never turn down an opportunity to, to coach and mentor a young leader. 
Uh, sometimes we got to unplug from the PowerPoint presentation world. It, it, it uh, develops our, our left side of the brain and is very linear thinkers and lean leaders need to be holistic thinkers. So sometimes what we like to do, especially with Lean Leadership Academy, when we start out developing lean leaders, we we go old school with flip charts. And what that does is that allows a team to work together on the presentation instead of one person sitting at a computer. The other thing is it connects the right brain and the left brain and, and, and develops a Kaizen mindset and the ability to get back to get back in touch with our creative self. Not only that, we're also teaching them to be trainers and teachers as well, which is a role lean leaders must be able to perform. Uh, make leaders responsible for each other. Uh, something else that uh, we can spend an entire session on is use the OBEA concept to accelerate lean leadership development. And what this allows you to do, first off, it changes the physical environment of leadership. Secondly, it allows a place where leaders can come, collaborate, and, and problem solve together and be accountable to each other together in a dynamic visual management environment. Uh, so dedicate one room, one space where leaders come and, and collaborate and, and problem solve together, sometimes known as a war room. The, one of the last things I'd like to encourage you to do uh, is to establish a daily top five. One of the things that we do is every day our lean leaders will present a daily top five and as a senior leader I will establish a daily top five. And then at the end of that day you're either red or green. And each leader says this is this is how I this is the status of my, my daily top five. I'm red on this, I'm red on this, I'm green on everything else. And then we'll say, well, talk to us about your reds. And then they'll give us a detailed explanation as to why they're red. And then our expectation is we will coach them to ensure they have a detailed plan to turn that red to green the next day. So the daily top five and the weekly top five objectives, generally around transformation activities and people development, it allows us to coach. It also allows for uh, some initial accountability in the transformation phase. So with that, uh, those are a few things I'd like to share with you, and, and hopefully you got something out of this today, and you'll try a few of these things out uh, over the next uh, few days and see if, uh, see if they help you with your leadership development objectives. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Jacqueline. Sam, thank you for participating yes, our session today. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> you did a great job. As mentioned previously, today's webinar is recorded. So you'll want to look for an email following our time together for a link to the recording. Feel free to share this throughout your organization. So again, thank you, Sam, and thanks to each of you for participating in today's session. Goodbye.